Hey, what's going on everyone? Tim here. Really excited that you're joining me today. Thank you guys for following along and uh, watching these tutorials. I've been having a lot of fun with these. Um, this one today is really cool. It's a sketchy text tutorial. Um, I had to come up with this effect for a recent project. And when I got done with it, I was like, man, I really wanted to share this with you guys. So this is kind of the base of what I did. I tweaked a lot um, in the end result, especially going between letters and everything. But I think if you have a project that really needs this, this is a good way uh, to give you uh, full control over this effect. So let's go ahead and start with a new composition. So I'm gonna click new comp here. And my composition name, I'm gonna name this base because this will be our base composition. Let's go 1920 by 1080. Uh, the frame rate, I'm gonna change this from 30 to 24 frames per second. And the duration, I'm gonna keep that at 10 seconds long. This looks good, let's hit okay. And so we have our empty base composition. The first thing I'm gonna do in here is create a text layer. So let's go ahead and right click new text. And this will bring up our empty text layer right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and type in some text and I'll just use sketchy text tutorial so this is going off of what i've been using so i'm going to come over to my character panel here and the font i chose and we're going to stick with this is fat frank you can get this off adobe fonts and so if you're using after effects you should be able to go ahead and go grab that on adobe fonts if you want to follow along but honestly any font should really work with this but i like the chunky fonts here because it gets a lot more detail and so a thinner font you may lose um, some of that detail later on but we're going to keep the uh, color at white. On my font size, let's go 300 pixels. On my line lead, I'm going to go 225. And then on my tracking, let's go to 50. So those are the parameters I'm using here, but again, this is all up to you. I'm going to go ahead and close my character panel and open up my paragraph panel and make sure that I have centered my text here. And once we have that centered out, I'm going to come to my line panel here and making sure that this is aligned layers to composition. Go ahead and just hit that align horizontally and align vertically. And now we're right in the middle of our composition and that's exactly what we want. So this is a good base. We're gonna pre-comp this here in a second, but I wanna do a couple things um, real quick to this to kind of give it some more visual interest. So let's come down to our text layer in our timeline here. And I'm gonna twirl down my text and I'm gonna come over to this animate here. And so I'm gonna click animate and let's do a rotation. We're going to add um, a rotation selector here. So we have our animator one. You can come in and rename this if you want. Name that rotation. I'm going to drop down my range selector. And so the parameters I'm going to give you here are kind of what I thought looked good. But again, this is all up to you. Um, but just go ahead and follow along with me and we'll get this set up. So I'm going to come to the start selector here and I'm going to type in 30. On the end, let's go ahead and type in 85. And on the rotation right here, I'm gonna just do six degrees. And so you can see right here, we're kind of tilting some text around, making it look a little more out of place and a little more jumbled, which adds to the sketchy effect. So we kind of want this to look uh, more natural and hand-drawn. And you can come through here and play with these more. I actually before went through individually and just really got these tweaked um, for what I was using it for. And, you know, really tilting different letters position wise and everything like that. But just for the sake of time in this tutorial, I want to kind of stick with this. So this looks great on the rotation. We've kind of jumbled that up a little, no animation, which again, you can do if you want to, but we'll leave it at this. So I'm going to twirl up my rotation and then twirl up my text layer. So on my text layer in my timeline, I'm going to click on that and then I'm going to right click on it as I select it. And I'm going to come down here to pre-compose. And this will bring up this pre-compose window. I'm gonna name this text. We'll go keep all this checked right here and hit okay. And so if you wanted to later come in here and you know change your text to whatever you want here, um, it will update inside that base composition without screwing up with any of the effects or anything we're laying on top of this and makes it nice and easy just to change it in this one comp and move on. So that's why we do that. I'm gonna keep it at this sketchy text tutorial come back to my base and from here let's start building so we're not going to do anything on our text layer but right on top of that I'm going to create three adjustment layers and so I'm going to right click in here new adjustment layer right click new and one more time so really I'm just going to be grouping effects into threes here just to make it a little more manageable and easy to turn on and off but you can do this all in one adjustment layer individual adjustment layers nine different ones but yeah for right now this will be good so First thing I'm going to do is come to my adjustment layer one, hit enter, and rename this to FX1. 
Go to my next one, FX2, 3FX3. So I just know that this is where all my effects and, and presets are living. So let's click on that FX1 adjustment layer. And over here in our effects and presets panel, I'm going to click on that. And the first thing I'm going to add to that FX1 adjustment layer is a gradient ramp. Type that in, bring that up. I'm going to double click on that. And really this is just to give it a little more shadowing as we um, layer on some other plugins later that will interact better with some light and lines and everything. Um, but just the base gradient ramp will be good right there. So I'm going to twirl that up. Come over to my effects and presets again. Let's type in CC glass. Double click on that, laying it right on top of my gradient ramp. I'm going to twirl down surface. On my bump map, let's go ahead and select the text layer. You can see we already have kind of a cool look. Um, I have another tutorial I'm going to do where we go through um, a look like this a bit more. Softness, let's go ahead and change that to negative 3. Get rid of that pillow we look. The height, I'm going to drop this to 20. And the displacement, let's bump that to 200. I'm going to twirl down my light. All we need to do here is change the light height to 90. Brighten that up a bit more. And then let's drop down our shading. I'm just going to drop ambient to 25. And the rest of this looks pretty good. So that looks good on the CC glass. Let's twirl that up. Come over to the effects and presets. And the last thing we're going to add to this effects layer is color and boss. And double click on that when that pops up and lay it right on top of that CC glass. And just a couple things we're going to do in here. First of all, on the relief, let's go ahead and change that to five. You can kind of see we're bringing in those edges and speculars. The contrast we can leave at 100. What we're going to do in here is animate this direction and just to give us that movement that later on you'll see as useful. So on the direction, let's change 45 to zero. So we're just going to start right in the middle there. And down in my timeline, I have my playhead at zero frame, zero seconds. Let's hit that stopwatch on the direction. And then take your playhead all the way to the end of that 10 second mark on that last frame. And then instead of zero revolutions, let's go to five. And so we're going to go 360 degrees five times. And so if I play through that real quick, you can see now we're getting that movement, almost that jellyfish look, um, which is really nice. So... This will play really well later on. And that's all we're going to do for our FX1 layer. So I'm going to twirl that up and let's move on to our FX2. So I'm going to click on that down in my timeline. Let's go to our effects and presets and type in CC Griddler. And you'll see that pop up there under Distort. So making sure my FX2 layer is selected, I'm going to double click CC Griddler. And let's go ahead and change a couple of parameters here. So on the horizontal scale, I'm going to keep that at 100, and then on the vertical, I'm going to change that to 55. And on the tile size, I'm going to change that to 1. So let's twirl up CC Griddler, pop back over to our effects and presets. Let's type in Bevel. And I'm just going to type in Bevel to bring up both of these options right here. So we're actually going to use both Bevel Alpha and Bevel Edges. The first one we need to drop in there, though, is the Bevel Alpha. So I'm going to double-click on that. And on the edge thickness, let's go ahead and bump that way up to 85.5. You can see we brought in a lot of really cool detail within that. And on this light angle, we're actually going to go ahead and animate this as well. And so if I start twirling this around, you can see if we animate this, we're going to start moving around the detail that's inside of the text. And so this will just add to all the visual interest going on here. So I'm going to keep my playhead at zero frame, zero seconds down on my timeline. Let's change the light angle from negative 60 to 125. And so with my playhead there, I'm gonna hit that stopwatch. We're starting at zero revolutions and 125 degrees. Let's take the playhead to the end at 10 seconds. And then we'll keep that at 125, but change the revolutions from zero to five. So we're kind of matching what we did on the uh, color emboss in the last layer. And so if I play through this again, you can see now we got that color embossed moving around the edges, kind of that light moving around, and then inside of the text is this detail that's animating around as well, which looks really nice. So let's go ahead and bump our light intensity up to one. That looks good. So this is just a cool effect in itself. And that's what I mean. Um, once you get through this, you can manipulate it how you want and get a ton of different looks. So, but I love the look of this right now. Let's twirl up bevel alpha. Come back over to our effects and presets, and we should still have both of these up. Let's click Bevel Edges, drop that on there. And with that Bevel Edges, you can see we're bringing in some of that detail up top again, where we were losing it in the shadows, which looks nice. So 
The hedge thickness, I'm gonna drop that from 0.1 to 0.02. And then the light angle, we'll keep that at zero and zero degrees. And we've introduced that light back up there. And then on the intensity, let's just drop that to 0.35. I'll play through that. Love the look of this now, but let's keep pushing it further. So that's all we got to do on our FX2 layer. Let's come down to our timeline and go to FX3 now. And this is where we're going to kind of finish up this whole look uh, before we lay it on top of some color and everything. So on our FX3 adjustment layer, I have that selected. Let's come over to our effects and presets. And we're actually going to lay another CC glass uh, plugin on top of this. So let's type in CC glass again and grab the one under stylized there, double click, making sure we're on the FX3 adjustment layer. And that looks freaking rad like that. But we are sketchy text today and not puffy zebra text, but maybe in the future. Let's go ahead and twirl down surface. On our bump map, I'm gonna just keep it on that FX3, which is the layer that we're on. Lightness looks good. And then on the softness, let's drop that to two. Lose all that pillowy goodness. On the height, we're gonna drop that to 20. And then on the displacement, let's drop that to 50 to kind of weaken up that effect a bit. And you can see we have this kind of fuzzy, sketchy look, but it's super fast, too much detail going on. So we'll need to break that up a bit. Come back to our CC glasses, twirl up surface. Let's twirl down light. And on the light, on the intensity, I'm gonna bump that to 285 really to start differentiating the white and the black. It's almost like a threshold effect, but we're doing it all within here. And then on the light height, let's bump that to 100 and the light direction can stay the same. So let's come up and twirl up light and then we'll drop down shading. And on the ambient, let's change that from 50 to zero. We'll get rid of that on the diffuse, get rid of that, drop that to zero. The specular, we'll keep that at 50. And don't worry, we didn't just lose everything. We're gonna make this even more sketchy. So. On the roughness, let's change this from 0 0.025 all the way to 0.5. So really strengthening that. And then on the metal, I'm gonna take this from 100 all the way to zero. And now you can start seeing what we're going for. So we have this kind of hand-drawn sketchy look. Um, it's really just black and white in here, kind of no gradients or middle ground um, with the grays or anything. So we've lost that. If I play through, you can see we're super fast still, but still have couple more plugins to add to make this better. So let's twirl up CC glass. Next thing I'm gonna do is come to my effects and presets, type in turbulent displace. And when that pops up over here, let's double click that and drop it onto our FX3 layer. And this is way too strong. So um, really all I wanna do with this is kind of roughen up these edges. They're a little straight and clean for me right now. If I turn that off, you can see what I'm talking about. Zoom in, it's just like very, fine edges right here and I want to lose that a bit. So over in my turbulent displace, I'm going to turn that back on. And in my displacement, let's change that from turbulent to twist smoother. The amount, I'm going to keep that at 50, but the size, I'm going to drop that to seven. And so you can see now doing that, we've added this kind of wavy uh, rough edges within here and it looks a lot better. Um, if I turn that off and on, you can see going from straight lines to kind of that uh, free handy sketch look. So this looks good. Uh, the offset turbulence and complexity is fine. We'll keep it there. And then that's really all we need to do. Like I said, all I wanted to do is roughen up these edges a bit and I've accomplished that with this. So let's twirl up turbulent displace. And the last effect we're gonna add to these uh, FX layers is just a posterized time. So I'm typing that in over in my effects and presets because if I play through this again, it's just super fast. It's more like almost glitchy and noisy. I don't know how to describe that, but it's definitely not sketchy by any means. So I'm gonna double click that posterized time, drop it right on there and change it from 24 to seven. And so we're gonna be dropping a lot of frames in here. And so if I play through that now, you can see we're a little more like sketchy sketchbook, um, that kind of stop motion animation style, which plays really well into this. So. That is the base of our um, sketchy text tutorial. And if I turn off my transparency grid or turn on my transparency grid, I should say, you can see the effect even more so. Let's take my playhead back to my timeline. I'm gonna turn off my transparency grid. Let's come to our project panel and hit that new comp icon right there. 
in our composition name, I'm going to name that to render and making sure that my comp settings are the same as my base settings. So 1920, 1080, 24 frames per second, 10 seconds long. Let's hit okay. And so now we have our empty render comp. Let's drop that base comp inside of there. And so the first thing I'm going to do is right click right under here in my uh, workspace and create a new solid. And black is fine because we're going to add a fill layer to this to really get the color we want. So 1920 by 1080, I'm just going to hit make comp size just to make sure. And then we'll hit OK. And let's drop that black solid underneath our uh, base composition there. And over my effects and presets, I'm going to type in fill and find that generate fill plugin right there. I'm going to double click on that, making sure that that is on my black solid and not my base because you don't want to lose this. And let's come up to this fill effect and... Um, Here's where you can just kind of change to whatever color you want. So the text is interacting with the color as well, which I think is super cool. I kind of landed on a nice orange here, and I'm going to go ahead and type that in. So that is F F A B 5 D. Let's hit OK. That looks good. You can rename that black solid to background color just to know what you're working with there. And let's go ahead and click on our base layer. And within our base layer here, I'm not going to create a new adjustment layer for this because I don't want to um, affect what's going on in my background color as well. And that's the same reason we didn't, inside of our base composition, create a solid and a background because all of these layers would have affected that background as well, probably giving you a funky look. So with our base composition selected inside of our render comp, come over to effects and presets, and I'm going to type in tint, T-I-N-T. That's out of the color correction. I'm going to double click that. And here's where you can kind of control some of the color um, that's going on here. You can also do this with a toner and different things like that. But um, I like the tint because it's just kind of that two color option. And so with my map black to, I'm going to change that from black to white. And we've really just changed all those black lines that you see here to those white lines. And then on my map to white, I'm going to click on that. And I want to maybe do a nice blue here to contrast with that orange. So okay that looks good right there i'm going to play through that and this looks pretty good so there's a couple adjustments i want to uh, make on this because right now it's a little kind of thin and see-through for me which i kind of like when it's on a maybe a black background but i want to fill this in a little bit and there's just a couple uh, small tweaks we need to make for that so let's come back over to our base composition and in my fx1 layer I'm going to come to this first CC glass. I'm going to twirl down surface inside of there. And initially, we kept the softness to zero because um, we wanted to make some sharper edges. But I just want to bump that up to three just a little bit. And so we're just adding back in um, some of those chunky soft edges there on the bevel. And that will kind of fatten this thing up, which will add to the effect a little more. So let's twirl up CC glass. And then let's come to our FX2 here. And on the CC Griddler, Initially, we didn't do cut tiles. I'm going to uncheck that. We're going to get more of this uh, kind of hand-drawn, almost doodly uh, look within there. And you can see now we're back to this. So I'm going to keep the cut tiles off there. And then on our bevel alpha, we did this light intensity at 1 just to really blow this out. But I'm going to drop this back down to the default, which is 0.45. And doing that kind of brings some of that definition back in to the text here. And you can see it's almost like stroking out the text, which is a really nice look as we go forward with this. So you can see just those couple little changes made this a whole lot better and a whole different look just with a couple different settings. So let's come back to our render comp. You can see now we have a whole different look here. And so, you know, coming back to this tint, you can see how easy it is just with this uh, one little effect. How we can change the look of that text as well. Just get the colors all different and... Um, yeah, but we'll keep it at the blue and white. And one more thing I want to do is just add a quick little drop shadow. I never really use drop shadows, but I feel like this calls for one. Let's change the opacity to 100. And on the shadow color, I'm going to just kind of get a brownish orange. It looks good right there. Change the direction to 180. The distance, I'm going to go to 15 and the softness to 5. Maybe we'll take that distance to 20. And I'm going to take my playhead back to the beginning there. And really just kind of adding some separation and depth. Um, come in here, maybe get that shadow a bit more 
closer to that orange. That's it, guys. That is it. So you could you can come in here and, like I said, come to our original text layer, and you can go through here and move around each one of these, move the position, add some wiggle or some movement within there to really make this thing come to life. Um, and I think that'd be a really cool look. But for now, this is the base of it. I'd love to see how you guys expand on this. And uh, you can always do that by heading over to Instagram, at Timmy Dwyer, that is my handle, look me up. Uh, shoot me a follow or a message. I'd love to follow you back there and talk to you on there as well. Um, just to see what you're working on, say hi. Um, and connect on creativity and everything like that. So head on over to Instagram, find me there. You can also drop some comments below with some feedback, with some ideas. I'd love to hear your thoughts on these tutorials or if you have ideas for new tutorials to let me know there. And as always, you can go over to my store, radloops.com. I'll link that in the description. Got a bunch over there for you to use. I also have some free stuff, like some asset packs, some textures and some project files that you can go ahead and, and use in your projects free of charge. And I'll be dropping more stuff over there. So keep an eye on that store as always. But until the next tutorial, I hope you all have the best day.